At one time hailed as the next king of Israel, Jesus, the famed teacher and miracle worker from Nazareth, was condemned to death by crucifixion yesterday by the Roman governor Pontius Pilate. Many of those who had followed Jesus throughout his ministry were present at the execution. But there were also those in the crowd who had you come savior. to mock and hurl insults at the renowned religious listen, listen. leader. Savior! You saved so many! Why don't you save yourself? Huh? Let's see! Let's see some of that miracle power bring you down from that cross, huh? As you can see, emotions ran high on both sides yesterday as Jesus of Nazareth was put to death. Before nightfall, Jesus was taken down off the cross and buried in a tomb belonging to one of his followers. It is there that Jesus' body now lies at rest. What could have brought about such a dramatic turn of events for a man who was seemingly at the pinnacle of success? We'll explore this question in today's broadcast. Plus, Ido the Seer will talk with John, one of the most high-profile disciples of Jesus, about the untimely death of his master in today's The Way I See It. That's all coming up on the Zion 7 Report. You're watching the Zion 7 Report, a comprehensive news magazine reporting today's news as it happens. With anchors Adam Zickler and Eve Havilah, plus news commentary with Ido the Seer. The Zion 7 Report. Jesus of Nazareth, a man shrouded in controversy for the last three years of his life, was violently put to death yesterday by order of the Roman governor Pontius Pilate. Just days before his execution, however, Jesus was enthusiastically heralded by many in Jerusalem to be the Jewish Messiah. Correspondent Jordan Iran takes a look at the unique circumstances that began this ultimately tragic week for the former carpenter from Nazareth. Passover week, a time when the families of this nation usually dedicate themselves to the selection and slaughter of a spotless lamb commemorating Israel's release from Egyptian bondage some 1,500 years ago. This Passover week, however, the people of Jerusalem had their eyes on a different lamb of sorts. In many respects, Jesus of Nazareth had become the favorite son of this desperate nation, a kind of chosen one to lead them out of their most recent bondage to Rome. I have never seen anything like this. Even the children praise him. Jesus has to be the chosen one. No one else has done what he's been able to do. This man is sent from God. He is the Messiah. I just know it. He has to be. How do you know he's the Messiah? Because of the miracles. He's raised people from the dead. He's healed lepers. Blind eyes are now open. What more proof do you need? There were some in the crowd that day who fully expected Jesus to immediately lead a rebellion against Rome. He speaks of a soon coming kingdom. Surely he sees how the people rally to his cause. I say he knows exactly what he's doing. And we stand ready to help him enforce it. But not everybody was in favor of submitting to Jesus' leadership. In fact, some of those present seemed very threatened by his influence. No one that breaks the law of Moses could ever be sent from God. And even if he can perform so-called miracles, that doesn't make him the Messiah. And I'll tell you another thing. The people that follow this man are simply uneducated fools. That's right. He doesn't even know the law of Not Moses. At all. Not at all. We may never know exactly what Jesus was trying to accomplish here in Israel. Like a lamb before its slaughterers, Jesus remained quiet before those who accused him. While having helped so many others, he seemed either unable or unwilling to help himself. Now, after such a triumphal entry into Jerusalem, Jesus, the former carpenter from Nazareth, lies buried in a tomb, executed by order of the Roman government. For the Zion 7 News Report, I'm correspondent Jordan Iran. Because the death of Jesus yesterday was unexpected, at one point there was a question about who would take possession of his body. It was at that point that a man named Joseph of Arimathea stepped forward and offered his own tomb for Jesus' burial. Correspondent Denali Fahid has the story. Normally, when the life of a convicted criminal has been taken, the body goes to a mass graveyard for a quick and inexpensive burial. However, before the body of Jesus could be carried away, Joseph of Arimathea intervened. This newly professed follower of Jesus took on the gruesome task of laying the prophet to rest. All I could think about was, where were they going to bury this man? The family and friends, 
they were in no condition to think about burial preparations. I think really some of them were expecting a miracle of some kind right up to the very end, angels coming to his rescue, something. But he died. Joseph asked Pilate's permission to take Jesus' body, and we took care of him. Gives me a tremendous sense of relief to know that this great man at least had a decent burial. Joseph may not understand everything that has happened over the past 24 hours, but he's done what he could to help a grieving family during their hour of need. For the Zion 7 Report, I'm correspondent Denali Fahid. Thank you, Denali. I'm sure that the family and friends of Jesus appreciate Joseph's efforts. Ito the Seer will talk with John, one of Jesus' closest disciples, to hopefully get more insight into this week's tragic events in today's The Way I See It. That's all coming up right after this. walked over to the giant lying on the earth, picked up his enormous sword, and chopped his head off. Do you, uh, hallelujah? Let's lift our hands to praise God. Lord, we thank you. Hallelujah! It's time for The Way I See It with Ido the Seer. Hello and welcome to The Way I See It. I'm your host, Ido the Seer. With me today is one of Jesus' closest disciples, John, son of Zebedee. Thank you for coming today, John. I know this has got to be difficult for you. It has been tough, Ido. I think we're all still wondering why this had to happen. It must be hard to believe that he's gone, especially since earlier this week, so many people in Jerusalem cheered when Jesus and the rest of your company entered the city. It is hard to believe. It seems like that day happened a long time ago. Now, the crowd kept calling Jesus Messiah. What exactly does Messiah mean? Messiah is a title used in Scripture that means anointed one sent from God. The prophet Isaiah wrote that the Messiah would come and set the captives free. Set the captives free from what? Well, I think the people in Jerusalem were expecting Jesus to set them free from the oppression of Rome. No wonder they were so excited. But you see, Jesus was more concerned about setting people free from spiritual oppression. To him, it was always more important to set a man free from the inner bondage of things like jealousy and hatred first. John, do you still think of Jesus as the Messiah? Yes. Yes, I do. But if he was the Messiah, how could he have been killed? You know, if there's one thing I am sure of, it is that Jesus was not killed. <laughs> Newsflash, Jesus no, was no, not no, killed. No, 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 no. Hear me out. I know it sounds crazy, but over the last three years, I've been with Jesus many times when people have tried to kill him, and they just, just couldn't. For example, one time we were in the temple in Jerusalem, and a group of scribes and Pharisees came over to where Jesus was teaching, and they wanted to argue. Jesus was teaching, if you continue in my word, then you are my disciples indeed, and you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. How can you make us free? We are the sons of Abraham. If you were sons of Abraham, then you would do the works of Abraham. But you are of your father, the devil. You are the one who is demon-possessed. Your father Abraham rejoiced at the coming of my day. How do you know? Before Abraham was, I am. Jesus would not back down, and they got furious. Finally, they lunged forward to seize him and kill him. But the strangest thing happened. All of a sudden, it was as if Jesus was invisible. He somehow cloaked himself and hid from their presence. What looked like sure destruction was immediately diffused. 
why didn't he do that last night when the soldiers came to arrest him? That's what I mean. He could have, but he didn't. He allowed himself to be hung up there on that cross for some reason. Whew, interesting. Thank you for coming and sharing your views with us today, John. Thank you, Ido. Kiddles, what John has said puts a whole new light on the subject of Jesus' death. The idea that he could supernaturally escape death but chose not to makes me think that there is more to this story than we know at this time. Maybe it was necessary for Jesus' blood to be spilled. I know this, that if the blood of an innocent lamb can be offered to cover sin, it is possible, it is possible that the blood of this man Jesus would make an even better sacrifice. Yes, I am sure that we are going to be hearing more about this in the days to come. I'm middle of the seer and that's the way I see it. Thank you, Ido. Well, whether you loved or hated Jesus, you have to admit the world has not been the same since the day he was born. That's right, Eve, and today we're taking the last few moments of this broadcast to bring you a collage of images dedicated to the life of Jesus of Nazareth. Shalom.